Okay, well we ended up getting the tractor and the buzzsaw over here. So that's what our goal was. We got that cleaned up a little bit in there. So now we have a nice little spot to do our work. Now, uh, eventually all of this here, this is gonna be all sloped down anyways. That's gonna be really low. So as you can see, it runs lower to the basement. And I want everything from there to slope down all the way away from the basement. Now this is where we're going to bring in our firewood to cut it up. We usually use the ATV and uh, bring it in usually four foot on that bike. That's how we used to do it. In the winter we use a snow machine. This little tractor, I haven't ran it in quite a few years because I took some parts off to fix that other little case dozer I had. But now they have the large dozer. I can take the parts back off and I can put this one back together. That's what we use there to cut our firewood. This is what I grew up calling a buzz saw. I know other people call it a cordwood saw, but uh, they are fairly primitive, but they work really well. Uh, one good thing about these, when you use them, you don't use mixed gas. You do use gasoline in the tractor, but you don't use chain oil either. So you're not replacing your chains or sharpening them all the time because that, that uh, big saw spins and cuts it in this belt pulley on the side of this old tractor drives it. Works phenomenal. So this is, this is how this turned out. See, there's another, we're surrounded by large ravines that the glaciers have cut in here when it was melting back, way back. Uh, yeah, well, before we were born, obviously, way, way back. So. Anyways, I shut the little dozer off right there to give you a little view of what it looks like around here now. So that's how it's starting to look. So I want that, like I say, all sloped from the basement over to here and it's going to be on a bit of an angle and I will show you what angle it's going to be at. So that is a little 360 degree panoramic view here. And pushing a lot of this down into that deep ravine. Now those these ravines are fairly deep here as well. That's why we don't have a whole lot of water problems here because everything runs down low. I removed some stumps, removed a few trees here with the tractor. Heather dropped a wrapper out of her pocket, I see. I will pick this up. I will take that in. Um, you know, for a little dozer, I'm telling you, even though it burns oil, uh, it is still cheaper to add a gallon of oil to it every few days than it is to hire somebody. So that's why I don't mind running that smoky old dozer. I have $1,555 roughly into that dozer already because I did trade that one tractor for it. I got for $1,500. And the reason why it was running not so great when I got it is because it needed an electric fuel pump. That shiny little thing on the side there, that's what it needed. And it cost me $55. I don't know who changed it, but I guess the, I don't know if the uh, injector pump is weak or maybe they came with an a, a inline electric fuel pump, but I don't think so, but you never know. And anyways, I checked it and it had really weak fuel pressure. So I put an electric fuel pump on it and it made all the difference. I had that old pipe laying around so I stuck on there for the exhaust. I put the canopy back on it and uh, yeah, I, I like it. The tracks, the self adjusters, they need a kit. They're not expensive, they're like $36 per side. I'm just not taking the time to do it right now because I just wanna get all this done right now as much as I can before we get heavy into working on that building because we are going to be on that building very very shortly um some of these logs were dragging out that piece of steel there i got to take that and cut that old frame up that was a frame that was on top of the uh, unit i used to make my sawmill out of so logs like this i'm just pushing out here and i'll lift those up and i will cut them into 16 inch wood and I'll burn those. Now they do have a little bit of time. I can mess around with this. We're not in a severe rush right now, uh, but it is just cooling off nicely where we can work on the pole barn. So that's what we're going to get at very shortly. 
So now this year, I'm gonna take all the material that I have to from in front of the house and it's all coming over. It's going into these deep ravines here so we have a backyard as well. So I'll show you everything on an angle like say, oh, let's go over to the house and I'll show you. I'll show you how this is going to be. I hope that wind's not affecting this microphone. I do have a sock on it, but I'm not sure how well that sock is going to work. So my buddy's little digging machine is still here and his trailer is here. But for the most part, um, this area is somewhat clear now so we can work on the pole building. So I'm going to show you here. Gardens are doing fantastic folks in case you're wondering. I try not to shake the camera too much but it's hard. So everything from, I'm gonna stand on the left, so everything on an angle like say, so there's the buzz saw, everything on an angle from about here I guess. Yeah, or maybe right about there. So in line with those three trees right beside each other. You can see I guess three right here. That was just got off that dozer so. Yeah, so everything is gonna be cut down from here over. It's gonna be sloped down lots. It's gonna slope all the way away from the basement here. I'll have a little high spot here. It's gonna come in like this here. We're gonna drive into the, to the pole barn if we want to. And we can drive around to the side where the tractor and buzzsaw is going to sit. And it'll be on the outside where the mill sits so we can just pile our slabs up on the outside. We can cut those when we get a pile. That is how it's looking, folks. We've been doing a lot of work around here. Now let me show you. So I'll show you what our driveway is looking like. Like I say, this digger here with the yellow tarp, I guess it's yellow, I'm colorblind, looks yellow to me. That tarp and this trailer and that digger is his. That's my little mower there, it's gotta go back. But um, uh, let me see here. So new driveway, this is what the new driveway is looking like out here. Uh, I took my other little dozer out back, so I have a little bit of stuff here to clean up yet. For the most part, I'll show you what it's looking like. As I say, I'm trying not to shake this camera, but it's pretty hard when you're walking. I have to do a little well job for a feller either today or tomorrow. That won't be uh, a big deal. That's his trailer there he wants me to weld up. So this is what it's looking like here. This is what I cleaned up in uh, yesterday's video. I believe it was yesterday's. And that's how that is looking out there. That's our one garden. And that's way out where the motorhome used to sit. And that's the other garden. That's my son's mo that's my son's camper trailer out there. He leaves here. Um, that's up around the shed. Little pile here. I got to clean up right here. Heather and I have to clean that up. We got a trailer ready to go to the dump as soon as it's open. And then the driveway comes down here. I zoom out here. Don't get too dizzy. And then I'm going to show you back here. What's it looking like back here now? Our little car is parked right there. Haven't used that probably in two months now, that little car. We have uh, been driving that old Jeep Liberty. So let's go for a little walk over here. Yeah, um, I usually leave the dozer parked here, but I think I will take it out back, park it out there. I have a little bit of stuff on the burn pit over there where we're gonna clean up. We're gonna burn that up. Uh, let me show you here. Heather's tomatoes are doing awesome. This is another view of what it looks like out there. We don't use the old driveway anymore. We're just letting the grass grow on that. I would rather let the grass grow out there than, than have a driveway there. So now that's in there. That's our little, one of our little gardens. Mind you, we have two out front. Uh, this is how it's looking here very shortly. I'm going to tow that truck right there out back. Uh, I gotta clean up around these fence. I have to get a get a grass trimmer going. 
a string trimmer or whatever you want to call it. Potatoes are doing good. We've been eating potatoes for a while. That's what this garden area is looking like in here, but I, but I'll we'll do a little tour of that real quick there as well. So this is what our potatoes are looking like. So these three and a half rows we planted beginning of uh, spring and then the other two and a part rows we planted later on. So these ones are still flowering. These ones are already done. They're just about dying these guys here. They're just about done. Phenomenal year for lettuce and peas. And that's what it's looking like from up here. You can see I put my my dozer over there and I'm putting that log right there because we're going to end up cutting that up. It is cooling off up here. It is about 18 degrees Celsius today here. So you're looking at about, oh, I don't know, 60 some degrees up there. Cooling off just nicely to be able to work. So I like that. And uh, let's go take a look through here. Like I say, very shortly we're going to be on that pole barn. We just have to do a few more things around here and then we're right on that. This is where we usually sit when it's too hot because this is kind of the north side is that building front. I keep some of my, my old mowers in here and the one I use, my, my John Deere here. I put the mower deck on this instead of the rototiller. I have the mower deck and the snowblower for this one. So I use this one for cutting the grass. Works pretty good, I think. Um, this this is how it's looking. I'll do you a 360 degree view too. So, so the garden tractor, the shed, our one garden back here. The doors are way over there. That's facing north right there. That's the house. Of course, uh, you probably could have guessed that. If not, well, there's no help for you. <laughs> uh, this is back to the tractor again, the John Deere. That's our one little planter box. I call our lunch box because it has a lot more salad growing in there as well. So all these tame strawberries that are in here, I mowed them down after I transplanted some in this box out here. Now Heather just threw in some peas there maybe about, I don't know, a month ago. Probably won't get anything off them, although we may. It looks like they're already starting to make pods, which is odd, but we picked so many peas from out front, it was unreal. That's the tame strawberries I transplanted in here, and I have the, the suckers pinned down, or, or the runners pinned down, so they're making more. That's our chive garden, chive garden, whatever you want to call it. Heather's tomato plants, they are just unreal again this year. They're so heavy, she had to string them up, and they're still falling all over. They're just loaded up with tomatoes. She's been picking tomatoes daily. Same as in here. Daily amount of tomatoes. I mean, a lot of them. So, uh, yeah, there we go. That's a little view of our garden here. Out here. Uh, there's a little strip there because I had a lot of wood on the burn pit there burn pile I should say and I poured some gasoline on it I ran a little string of gas out to here and then I lit it on fire back here so I didn't lose my eyebrows <laughs> yeah and then up here uh, this is that just some sunflowers that just grew on their own from seeds that you know they gotta be they gotta be seven feet high those things hascap berries did good this year Wild raspberries are doing really good. The blueberries didn't do good at all. That's why we figured we'd uh, forage for some wild edibles other than berries. So we went and got those mushrooms. Uh, so that's what our little yard is looking like back here. And we'll go for a little walk up front. It has changed a lot, I think, since we first started working on this place. Every year, it improves. It gets a little better. Now let's take a walk up front here. So 
you can see our trail way back there too. I think you can see our trail way back there. And you can see my alpine sitting back there as well, parked. So I put the snowmobiles out there where they're not in the way. Like I say, this truck here, I'm gonna move that truck out back. Relocate all those solar panels, the spare ones I have against the house. Don't need them. Uh, this stuff here, that glass is going out back because I wanna save that for a greenhouse. We'll put our horse back and tie it up, that old horse I made. Those barrels there, we save those barrels. And I uh, have to mow this grass again. Man, it grows quick. I'm telling you, it seems like I cut it about every three, four days, but I guess that's probably normal though. I just find it takes me away from doing stuff that I think is important. Now we have a groundhog here too, but he never seems to bother the garden. See, he's running off over there now. Peas, I think they're just about done. Heather's picked so much peas. Well, we both have picked a lot of peas off here. Carrots are getting really good. More lettuce out here we eat. She's got some peppers and some tomatoes. She threw in some cucumber seeds here as well, not too long ago. We have rutabagas there. These are how our garlic is doing. Down at the end, we have a little bit more onions and some carrots, and here, our turkeys are locked up because they got out here and they tore all the tops off of our onions. So if people tell you birds are good for your garden, not at all in my opinion. They get in there, they see a fancy nice little blossom. You think you just about the time you're going to get a tomato or a cucumber, a bird will come along, your chickens or your turkeys, and they will rip that blossom off. That's what I have found all my life. So. Anyways, yeah, I gotta get out here and mow this. And over here is our other garden here. So Heather ordered some uh, black raspberry plants at the beginning of the year. We put them in and we got frost two days later and it froze them and I, we thought they were gonna die. But Heather has been babying them and they've actually, actually came back and doing good. So there's one black raspberry cane, two, three, number four black raspberry cane. And then in this garden here, we have one row of potatoes here. The next row is more tomatoes. And then the next three rows is more potatoes again that was planted not too long ago. We, so we staggered them. We didn't plant the potatoes all in one shot. You can see these are flowering already. Now the reason I didn't hill these okay is because there's a difference in potatoes, why I didn't hill these, and next video maybe I will explain to you why I did not hill these potatoes and I hilled the ones out back because these are a different type. If you're curious, before I tell you, you look up determinant and indeterminate potatoes and you'll see what I mean. These are a determinant potatoes, not an in indeterminate, and you'll see why. You do not hill determinant potatoes, you're just wasting your time. So up here, yeah, let's go up here and see. Let's see what we have here. Heather and I have been uh, busy for the last few weeks, that's why we haven't put up videos in a while. I've been recording them, but I haven't really put them up, but I'm going to start to uh, publish them very shortly. If you made it through the video so far, this far, thank you for sticking around. Like I say, I'm sorry, my gimbal is not working, so I have to hand hold this camera and it's shaky, I know, and I'm sorry. We're gonna get out and we're gonna clean this little pile up, move it out back, because that is our uh, stuff we use there. We're getting ready to tear that old house down too. Not till next summer though. Uh, this year we cleaned up all those tires, piled them up because some of them are really good still and I didn't want them to go to waste. There was a big toolbox there. Uh, we relocated it as well, cleaned it up. Took a lot of stuff that we didn't want to the dump. Now these are some belts, V belts that I had put away. They were hung up in the basement. When the basement came down, I brought them out, set them here. We're, we put them here two days ago. We're taking them out back. 
a garden hose, the spare tire for the Jeep Liberty. And this is what this is looking like out around here now. It's kind of how it used to look with the concrete slab out here and that little building. But this tree has grown a lot since way back when, when I was in my 20s, I planted this. Heather and I planted that spruce tree right there. And then Heather and I also planted this tamarack here. And it's starting to come back. It's doing really good. This, this little tree here was only about two feet tall and now it's probably almost 20 feet tall. Yeah, we have one of our riding mowers covered up up here. So we want to go ahead and we want to clean all up around the front of this and uh, get that ready to tear down next summer. We should have the pole barn done soon. And that is what it's looking like up here. You can see our potato garden out back right there. And then we have our other garden over here. So we do have some iris plants right here growing. We have some of these. Uh, they were all out in blossom, but the flowers are closed up. But they look pretty nice too when they're open, but like I say, they're closed. This was that pond here I started filling in. I'll come out once all this uh, brush rots down. I will light that on fire. One day when it's wet enough, that it's not going to uh, take fire. This is the box I'm going to put around our stove pipe. I'm gonna clean that up a little bit and that'll go around our stove pipe on the main floor so the, the children that come around don't burn their fingers on it. This is the old driveway here again. We're up here at my son's camper trailer. And uh, these trees, Heather, I planted two a few years back. They are starting to take off. You can see the new growth on the top. That light color is all new growth. You can really see it here. So that's how much new growth we've had this year. That's the size of my hand. And that's how much growth from, from here all the way up that light stuff. And they're, they're doing good. It was a good season for it. And that's what it's looking like from here. I'll do a little panoramic view again. That's the road. The old driveway right here, which we're letting grow. We're gonna level this out a bit, smooth it out, I should say. The new driveway is way up there on the other side of the old house, like it used to be, except now it runs all the way back and over into there, past our potato garden. And this is our other garden right here. And this is what the yard looks like. It takes me a good five or six hours to mow all the grass out here. It's, uh, it's quite an area. I eventually want to uh, maybe fence this in, maybe get a cow or something later on. That's one of the other reasons why we're uh, making sure everything's picked up so we don't get a cow in here swallowing a bolt or a nail. Although, you know, could put a magnet in them like most people do. That is the wood stove too. I lent, uh, I brought it up here when the motorhome was up here and my sister and nephew stayed here. They wanted a, a wood stove outside so they could cook on, so I brought that up here. That will go out back as well, way out behind the house until I need it. Anyways, folks, that's it for now. If you stuck around long enough to the end, I thank you very much and I really appreciate it. So please folks, hit the thumbs up. And uh, I hope you're all doing safe and sound and doing good, I should say. And uh, you're, you're surviving the trouble and turmoil that's going on in the world. And uh, yeah, keep, keep positive thoughts, folks, and uh, we'll all get through this. Anyways, you all take care, and we'll talk to you another time, folks. Bye-bye, all.